The sins here are a hybrid of humans and twisted trees. They are tortured by the harpies, who tear their branches and trunks to make them bleed and suffer. In the forest, the disgusting harpies make their nests and make mournful screams. They have broad wings and human necks and faces, clawed feet and large feathered bellies. Before you go any further, be aware you are in the second ring and will be until you come to the dreadful sand. So look carefully and you will see things that might not easily believe what I say. Seventh circle, the inner ring. Here reside the violent against God, or blasphemers, the violent against nature, or perverts, and the violent against art, or usurers. All reside in a desert of flaming sand with fiery flakes raining from the sky. The blasphemers lie on the sand. The usurers sit, and the perverts wander about. Then he signaled to the beast to come closer to the border of our rocky path. See the savage beast with the pointed tail, which crosses mountains and destroys walls and weapons. Look at the one that torments the world. His face was the face of an honest man. It had a benign aspect, but all the rest of it was serpent. Both arms were covered with hair to the armpits, and his body armed with a scorpion-like tail. Eighth circle, the fraudulent. Here is I, the sinners guilty of deliberate fraud, who are located in a circle named Malpoje, or evil pockets. This circle is divided into ten chasms of stone, with bridges spanning the chasms. Eighth circle, chasm four. Here reside the sorcerers and false prophets, diviners, astrologers, and magicians who have their heads twisted around on their shoulders backwards so they can only see what is behind them and not in the future. I was now quite ready to look into the chasm bathed with tears of anguish. I saw people coming silent and weeping through the city valley at a pace of processions. When my eyes looked further down on them, each of them appeared strangely distorted between the chin and the start of the chest since their heads were reversed from their body and they had to move backwards since they were not allowed to look forward. Are you like other fools as well? Pity is alive here, where it is best forgotten. Who is more impious than one who bears compassion for God's judgment? That one, whose beard stretches down from his cheeks over his dusky shoulders, was an augur when Greece was so emptied of males for the expedition against Troy. His name is Eurypylus. Eighth circle, chasm five. Here reside the baritors, or corrupt politicians. We stopped to look into the next chasm of Malabolge when I heard more vain grieving and I found it incredibly dark. All I could see was a great darkness. I saw the chasm but still saw nothing in it except for the bubbles that the boiling caused. While I was looking fixedly at it, my guide screamed. Look out! Look out! Then behind us I saw a black demon coming up the cliff with a sinner on top. He stopped and threw him down the sinner sight and he rose again with his face all pitched. The demons under cover of the bridge screamed. Get down behind that wall and yourself, and so they do not see that you are here. If they do any offenses to me, have no fear. I know this place and have been in a similar danger before. This is no place for the holy visage. Here you swim different than in the Sergio. So unless you'd like to feel our forks, do not emerge above the pitch. The demons rushed from below the bridge and turned their weapons against my guide. Don't be afraid. Let them grin away at their will, since they do it for the boiled sinners. A circle, chasm six. Here reside the hypocrites. The bridge over this chasm is broken, so the poets climb down into it and find the hypocrites walking around wearing gold-gilded lead cloaks. Down there we found metal-coated people, weeping, circling in very slow steps. 
They looked both weary and defeated. They wore caps with deep hoods over their eyes in the shape of monks of Cologne. I began, oh friars, you evil, but said no more because I saw one crucified on the ground with three stakes. That one you look at is Caiaphas, the high priest, who told the Pharisees that it was right to martyr Jesus for the sake of the people. A circle, chasm eight. Here reside the fraudulent counselors or advisors who are encased in individual flames. The eighth chasm was glowing with flames, as many as one can see. The souls are inside those fires. Each of those flames moved along the chasm and every flame embraced a sinner or two. So master, who is in that fire that moves divided at the summit? In there, Ulysses and Diomede are tormented together in punishment, as they were formerly in war, and in their fire, they groan at the ambush of the Trojan horse. The great horn of the ancient flame started to shake itself, murmuring like a flame struggling in the wind, then moving the tip of the flame as if it were a tongue speaking, said, I set out on the wide, deep ocean with only one ship, and that little company that never abandoned me. Oh, my brothers, who have reached the West through a thousand dangers, do not deny the brief vigil your senses have left to them. Experience of the unpopulated world beyond the sun. Consider your origin. You were not made to live like beasts, but to follow virtue and knowledge. We rejoiced, but soon our joy turned to grief when a tempest rose from the new land and struck the prow of our ship, and the prow sank until the sea closed over us. The flame was now erect and quiet and was going away from us when another one came saying, I, Guido de Montefeltro, was a man of arms. What had pleased me before now grieves me. And with repentance and confession I turned monk, believing I would be forgiven. But I am lost here as you see, clothed in fire. I go inwardly grieving. This circle is guarded by classical and biblical giants who are standing around the ninth circle of hell and are visible from the waist up. I heard a horn blast so much louder than thunder. So at the edge of the cliff that surrounds the pit loomed up like towers half the body bulk of terrible giants, those whom Jupiter still threatens from the heavens when he thunders. This is Nimrod, through whose evil thought one single language is not still used throughout the world. Let us leave him alone and not speak to him in vain, since every language to him is like his to others that no one understands. Ninth Circle. Here reside the traitors. When we were down inside the dark well beneath the giant's feet and much lower, and I was still staring at this deep cliff, I heard a voice say to me, Take care as you pass, so that you do not tread with your feet on the heads of the wretched, weary brothers. You must know that I am Count Bugolino, and this is the Archbishop Bugeri. Now I will tell you why I am such a company to him. I was taken through the effects of his evil schemes, and afterwards killed. But what you cannot have learned is how cruel my death was. This man seemed to me the Lord and Master. But he made my sons and I die of starvation incarcerated in a high tower. Of the sorrowful kingdom rose from the ice, waist upwards, and I am closer to a giant than the giants are to one of his arms. Ah, oh, what a great wonder it seemed to me when I saw three faces on his head. The one in front was fiery red, the other two black and yellow, each joined to it in the middle, 
and all three were united at the top. Under each face, it had huge wings of a size fit for such a giant. They had no feathers and looked like bad wings. When it flapped open, it blew out three separate wings away from it, so all Cloisetus was frozen. I shrank back behind my guide because of the wind since there was no other shelter. He cried from six eyes. The bloody red saliva went down three chins. He chewed a sinner with his teeth, one in each mouth, tormenting three at once. That soul up there that suffers the greatest punishment, he who has his head inside and his legs outside, is Judas Iscariot, betrayed Jesus and religion itself. The one that hangs from the black face is Brutus. See how he writhes and does not say a word. And the other one is Cassius, who seems so long in limb. Both of them betrayed the great Julio Caesar and society itself. But night is ascending. And now we must leave, since we have seen it all. In this zone, the sinners are completely encapsulated in ice, distorted to all conceivable positions. set me down to sit on its edge. Then he turned his cautious step towards me. I raised my eyes, thinking to see Lucifer the same as I left him, but saw him with his legs held upwards. Because the way is long and the road is not easy, the sun is returning to mid-tears. My master, before I leave the abyss, speak to me a while and correct me. Where is the ice? And why is this monster fixed upside down? And how has the sun moved from evening to dawn in so short a time? You imagine you are still on the other side of the center of the earth, where I grasped Lucifer's hair. You were on that side of it, as long as I climbed down. But when I reversed myself, you passed the point to which weight is drawn from everywhere. And now, we are below the opposite hemisphere. The guide and I entered by the hidden path return to the clear world and not counting to rest we climbed up he first and I second until through the round opening I saw the beautiful things that the sky holds Yeah.